This is a very simple problem, maybe the simplest case that we can imagine. A cantilever beam subjected to one concentrated load at the right end. Okay, the first step would be determining reaction forces. I think in this case it's very easy. The reaction force at the left end would be P, the shear force. The axial reaction in the X direction would be zero because there is not any force in that direction. And the moment would be simply P times arm, which in this case is L. So the moment at the left end would be PL. Okay, so these are the reaction forces. The shear diagram for this case would be constant because there is not any loading between left end and right end. So the shear diagram would be like this. If I integrate it one time, I will get moment diagram. Let me do that mathematically here. Integral of P dx, how much that would be? That would be Px plus a constant. There would be a constant in that integral. So I will call that constant as C1, Px plus C1. We don't, we shouldn't forget that constant number. And how much is that constant? How can I know how much is that constant? Exactly. So what he said is at x equal to zero, at the very left end, we know how much is the initial moment. How much is that? It's PL. It's actually negative PL. Okay. So I put m at x equal to zero, um, m at x equal to zero equal to negative PL. And if I do that, Px vanishes, and C1 would be equal to negative PL. Okay? So I determined the value of C1. How did I determine that? I considered something that I will call that boundary conditions. It means that what is the status of moment or shear or deflection or slope at a certain point on the boundary of this structure. All right? Now, I need to determine slope. I will integrate it one more time. So EI theta slope of the spin would be integral of that value, integral of moment, which gives me Px minus PL. And how much would be integral of this? That would be Px squared over 2 minus PLx plus a constant number. I will call that constant as C2. Okay. How can I determine C2 in this case? At x equal to 0, what do I know about slope at that point? How much is the slope at the very left end of this structure? At 0. Why? Because there is a fixed support at that end. Slope at that end is 0. Okay? So I put Ei theta x at x equal to 0 is equal to 0, and that gives me C2 equal to 0. All right, I will integrate it one more time to determine deformation. Ei delta x would be integral of Ei theta x, which would be px squared over 2 minus plx. And if I integrate that, I will come up with px cubed over 6 minus plx squared over 2 plus c3. And I need to, again, get rid of the last constant in this integral. How can I determine this C3 in this form? What do I know about deformation of this beam at any point? How much is deformation at the very left end of this structure? Zero. So I can say that EI del delta at x equal to zero is zero, and that gives me C3 equal to zero. Okay? Finally, the equation of deformation would be px cubed over 6 minus plx squared over 2. And let me simplify that. Delta x would be px squared over 6ei. I moved ei to the right side of this equation times x minus 3l. So that would be the deformation equation of this beam as a function of x. So having this equation, enables us to determine deformation of this beam at any point as a function of x, as a function of loading, and as a function of modular elasticity and moment of inertia. Okay? How much would be the maximum deformation in this beam? The maximum deformation is this beam. Let me first determine slope. 
Slope would be, I just plug the, uh, I know that C2 is 0, so I will write it down here. That would be Px squared over 2 minus Plx. Let me simplify that. Theta would be Px over 2ei times x minus 2l. Okay? So the maximum deformation in this case, which I call it delta max, would happen on the very right end because this is where this function is maximum. So I need to put x equal to l into that equation, and that gives me negative pl cubed over 3ei, and similarly, the maximum slope would be at the same point, at the very right end, and that gives me negative pl squared over 2ei. All right? So maybe for this problem, it was not very really difficult, but this is not the case for the structure when we have a little bit more complicated loading, or maybe a little bit more complicated kind of restraints, or maybe the case that we have several elements connected together. In those cases, I can say it is kind of impossible to solve the deformation of this beam using this method. So what we can do? We usually use, we use the principle of superposition, and we split our structure into simpler parts. I will talk about that a little bit later, but first let me make sure that everybody understands this kind of problems. Yes, sir. What's E1? It's EI. E is muzzle of elasticity, and I is moment of inertia of the beam. The product of EI, we call that as rigidity of beam. Okay, we can determine, it depends on what is the section and what is the material used for making that beam, but we usually consider EI as a unit, and we call that rigidity of beam. So higher modular elasticity gives me more rigid beam, or larger section, which gives me higher moment of inertia, higher I, gives me larger rigidity. All right? So let me talk about the different boundary conditions that we might have in this kind of problems. In the, the simplest boundary condition that we have is the pen support. In the pen support, we know that deformation is zero. Do we know how much is the slope? No, we don't know anything about the slope at that point. For roller support, similarly, we know that deformation is zero, but we don't know how much is the slope. For pen support in between, in the middle of the beam, again, we know that deformation is zero, and similarly for ruler support in the middle of a structure. There, we don't know anything about the slope of this kind of uh, supports. For fixed support, we have two boundary conditions. Slope is zero, and deflection is zero. And for free end, we actually don't know anything about free end. We don't know how much is slope, and we don't know how much is deformation. But we know that shear and moment are zero at that end. The positive moment and negative moment are the one that we previously used for determining sign of stress. And following that, we will come up with this uh, sign convention for slope. All right.